I'm Deborah Collins, Deputy Director, Deputy, I almost forgot, Deputy County Administrator, new title, Director of Small Business, oh, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that, I so appreciate it. I'm also the Director of Small Business Development and the Affirmative Action Officer for the great County of Essex, and it's my pleasure to serve as your MC for Essex County's 2017 Women's History Month celebration. Now, I, I just have to digress for a moment because I want Senator Teresa Ruiz's t-shirt. Please, I, I, she's going to come up later, but this is fabulous. Turn around. You know this. Nevertheless, she persisted in homage to Senator Elizabeth Warren. Thank you.
Our county executive, Joseph M. DiVincenzo, chose them because they represent some of our best, brightest, and our boldest examples of women on the move. So how do we support women in the quest to reach unlimited potential? According to Sheryl Sandberg, Chief Financial Officer of Facebook, the goal is to work toward a world where expectations are not set by the stereotypes that hold us back, but by our personal passion, talent, and interests. Please join me in celebrating our honorees with a hearty <coughs> round of applause. Joe, 
thank you very much, folks. Congratulations. Hi, everybody. My name is Joyce Goldman, and I'm the director of constituent service for the county. I like to call myself the county ventilator. Anytime you need to vent, just call Joe's office and ask for me. This year, um, for the first time, the county executive is acknowledging somebody from the next generation of leaders. The, the women, the young girls, who will be women who are coming behind us. And uh, we're recognizing uh, uh, Deja, Deja Wu, so I guess people know how to pronounce your name, huh? <laughs> Deja Wu Edmund, and she's getting the uh, 2017 Girl on the Go Althea Gibson Spirit Recognition. One day, I uh, bumped into her mother, uh, Belinda Sally, who works for our welfare division, and she showed me this, which is the book that Deja had written about going after the things you want and achieving your dreams. And so, it's for sale. You can call me and order one of those to do a little plug for you. <laughs> it's very good. It's inspirational for boys and girls <clears throat> to learn that girls can do anything that they want to do as long as they stick up for themselves and, and fight the fight and proceed properly. Go play football if you want to. So Deja, come on up. By the way, this is written by Deja. This is not written by her mother. This is written by Deja. And I will read the plaque, Deja, so you will know exactly what you're getting and people can learn about you. Born in Newark, Deja is an 11-year-old sixth grader with a vision of capturing her life's events to share her journey through the teen years with her peers. It's a difficult journey. <laughs> Big task. Um, her recently published first book, Uniquely Made, Girls Don't Play Football, tells the tale of her fight against uh, the adult concept of gender-specific activities. It is meant to inspire other young girls to follow their dreams. She's held book signings, met famous people, and received many honors for her achievement, both playing football and telling her story. A new book, one that all women in the room can <laughs> understand, is called Hair Chronicles. <laughs> I'm growing mine. <laughs> um, it's on the, its way, and we look forward to following the adventures of this particular Girl on the Go, presented by Joby Vincenzo, Essex County Executive, as always, putting Essex County first. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs>
with us today, some musicians on drums. Seriously, I just want to play track, so I'm very impressed. On drums, on keyboards, on the flute, and yes, young man, we recognize you too, but we're <laughs>
is in Florida, and he called me very early this morning at 7.30 to tell me that he couldn't be here because he's in Florida, but he loves Margie and he wanted her to know that he cares so much about her. Margie is a special person. We grew up in a family where we were always taught to give to the community, to do as much as we can for others. That's probably why I taught at West Orange High School for 30 years. It was part of our upbringing. And that's why Margie has this wonderful position at St. Barnabas and works so very hard for everyone. How she keeps up all her work, I don't know. I have a lot of energy, but she has even more. She is absolutely terrific. And with that, I'd like to call up Margie. I'll read you a little bit of the resolution. It says, although Margie Heller works for a hospital, the goal of her unit is to keep people from coming there. In her daily routine are off-site screenings, health education programs, nutritional ad ad advocacy events, all aimed at promoting a healthy lifestyle. She attributes her 22-year career at St. Barnab Barnabas Medical Center to an alignment of her personal mission, visions, and values with those of the leadership of the professional setting, RWJ Barnabas Health. The spirit and responsibility of community service was ingrained in her at an early age, fostered by strong role models such as her parents and her aunt. A resident of Roseland, Margie has always been active in nonprofit organizations, serving on a number of boards, supporting her community in many different ways. We are happy to call her our friend, Joe DiVincenzo, Essex County Executive, putting Essex County first, and our county executive has been friends with Margie as long as I can remember. Margie. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Pat, Joe D, and the County of Essex for this honor. I consider it a privilege to be accepting this award alongside some truly amazing and inspirational Essex County women. For those of you who do not know Ms. Gibson's history, she was not only the first African American to cross the color line of international tennis, winning 11 Grand Slams, Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open, but she was also the first woman of color to compete in the Women's Professional Golf Tour. She was infamous for breaking new barriers, not only for African Americans, but also for women. As the Administrative Director of Community Health and Outreach at St. Barnabas in Livingston, breaking down barriers is part of our daily mission. Our job revolves around the ability to break barriers, to engage the community, and to serve a public need through health educations, screenings, and community support. I've always been passionate about helping others and making our community healthy and well, both locally and globally. The success of these efforts requires cohesion on multiple levels. Perhaps one of my favorite quotes I've learned from Ms. Gibson is, no matter what accomplishments you make, somebody helped you. I hold the statements to be true, both personally and professionally. On a personal level, community service has been a quality ingrained in me from a young age. I was fortunate to have strong community-minded role models in my father, my mother, and my aunt Pat. It is a value that has always been encouraged by my husband Dave at home and embraced by some of my closest <coughs> strong women. Professionally, I'm very fortunate to have the support of my administrative team, my boss, and the women in my office, Winnie, Anita, and Lauren. The, this dynamic of learning lessons from those who came before us, such as Ms. Gibson, and drawing inspiration and knowledge from the world and the society we are experiencing today affords us the opportunity to mold healthier communities inclusive of all its diversities. Thank you very much.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I just want to take a moment. The, the, the music that was performed by the ensemble was from Abby Lincoln, someone that Mr. McCune has wor had worked with for two years, a woman who composed, wrote, and performed all her music, but also was a civil rights activist, and a very compelling, moving music. The music is magic. So I just wanted to thank and give a round of applause. <laughs> Before I get the opportunity and the honor to introduce the next honoree, I just wanted to um, pause for a moment and share some personal insight. Last year at this time, I was probably around eight weeks pregnant and no one really knew. And I remember sitting here telling Joe every time that he's like, you have to get up and speak. And I was like, I think I'm going to vomit all over myself. <laughs> but just point of personal privilege, I guess I would share that with you. <laughs> When my daughter was born, it was during the first debate before the presidential election. We started laboring at exactly 9 o'clock, and she came out shortly after 10. Uh, we watched everything. We commentated. Uh, it was very um, liberating because I had a lot of inspiration to push in the middle of me getting very upset at some of the things that were being discussed. <clears throat> and then things changed in November, and I was at home, I, you know, a new mother to a young woman, and I was very upset at the time. Like, how would I explain to her kind of the, the feeling of letting her down during that electoral cycle? And then my feelings have changed dramatically over the last few months. It is the best time to be a woman in this country because it is impossible for anyone to try and marginalize or disenfranchise a group of individuals who are creators of life and caretakers of all. And so when we see people talking disparagingly about communities that they want to put in corners or they want to give titles to that are not significant of who we are in our roles, we have demonstrated that we are much greater than that. The forces who are negative have shown us that it is our time to come together in unity and to show our strength. And I think we are seeing that moving forward. So some people might be depressed. I am inspired because it is the best time to be a woman. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination, and instill a love of learning. And this individual has done that from early on. Her career started in a preschool classroom, she accelerated into an administrative role, and she's continued her devotion as vice principal at North Tech. And what a great story to have been an alumni and be back there giving in public service. I've known her for probably close to 15 years. And not only is she committed in the classroom, but she's committed to, to the community. A loving mother, a dedicated community service provider, someone who recognizes that education can be a tremendous game changer. Let's welcome the Athea Gibson Spirit Recognition Award E. Uh, 2017 to Carmen, and this I learned new. Funny how you think you know someone all the time, but her middle name is Teresa as well. Carmen Teresa Morales. but she has a beautiful young woman who is looking at colleges and is graduating this year and uh, stand up. <laughs> so she's uh, truly an inspiration to all her students and of course at home. Essex County 2017 Althea Gibson Spirit Recognition presented on March 22, 2017 to Carmen Teresa Morales, Vice Principal Essex County North Tech Campus. Carmen, a North Tech alum, has returned to guide the students of this generation, many of whom face the same issues she did as a student. The first in her family to graduate from college, Montclair State University, she began her career as a preschool teacher and was quickly promoted to working with the director. That experience charted her course into administration and a master's from Fairleigh Dickinson University, followed by an education specialist degree from Seton Hall, with principal and supervisor certification. Carmen strives to build strong connections to the school for both students and parents and works with faculty and administration to help her young people achieve their potential. She also devotes time to serve in leadership positions of her sorority, Lambda Theta Alpha. We are fortunate to have her as an outstanding role model for our students. And anyone here who's committed their life to education recognizes that if we can point to one career that's the most important in anyone's life, that's teaching. So thank you for the work that you do.
I want to start by thanking our county executive, Jody Vincenzo, and his team for hosting us this afternoon. Women's History Month is an opportunity to acknowledge the trailblazers of the past, to know the heroines of today, and to inspire the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you so much for recognizing me. I am deeply honored, and congratulations to the other honorees. I want you to know that although you are honoring me today, I want to share this award with the students, staff, and administrators at Essex County North Tech. They are truly a committed and outstanding group of people. For me to serve as vice principal to the school where I attended is like a dream come true. I have so many good memories as a student at this school. I remember entering the VICA competition with stands for Vocational Industrial Clubs of America and winning the first silver medal in computer technology. I remember having one of the best guidance counselors guide me through the college application process, a process I knew nothing about since I was the first in my family to go to college. I also remember all the great friendships I've established, friends with whom I still keep in contact. In fact, my high school best friend, Araya, is here today. I have committed a large part of my career to education, first as a preschool teacher, at the North Ward Center, then as a kindergarten teacher in the Belleville Public Schools, next as an active alumni in my sorority, I'm also a mentor to all my younger sisters, Lambda Theta Alpha, and now as Vice Principal at Essex County North Tech. Each experience has presented itself different challenges and learning opportunities for me. Today, students face significant pressures and obstacles, many of whom I'm familiar with. My job as a vice principal is to work with my principal, Mr. Dennis, to ensure that we structure an environment that will help our students achieve, and achieve we have. <clears throat> Last year, we were recognized as a blue ribbon school. We are very extremely proud, and I want to continue to make significant strides. Lastly, I want to thank my family. I have some of the most important women in my life here today. My mom for always being my biggest cheerleader, truly being supportive during my tough days and always encouraging, and my beautiful daughter Jocelyn. Everything I do, I do for her. I want to be that great example and role model for her to follow. So thank you again for this wonderful recognition. I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate all the honorees, especially to a very special person in my life, to Carmen. Uh, you know, I admire her in many, many ways. She's very persistent, uh, she's committed, she's a great mother, and um, she's a diehard educator. And she's so proud to be uh, where she is at North Tech, and her roots at that school have really allowed her to become a great administrator. And, and as we celebrate Women's History, I can only think of uh, the incredible women who have inspired me in my life. Uh, educators, you know, I think of individuals like Diane Hill, uh, who's still a very dear friend of mine at Rutgers University, and if it, was, if it wasn't for Diane, uh, Joe, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. And I also pay tribute today uh, to the outstanding group of women uh, directors that are part of the Department of Citizen Services. And I see a few of my guide directors here, like George, uh, Lee, but I, I tell you, uh, Jackie, uh, Jeanette, you know, they're outstanding. They're very, very committed uh, to the residents of our city. They're my best directors. as well as the uh, mayor of the uh, township of Montclair. Uh, happy uh, uh, Women's History Month to everybody. Uh, I, I want to say that I'm inspired to be a woman, but I'm not quite sure how to play out. Maybe just a little too late. Thank you. I have the honor today of uh, honoring uh, Autumn Turner, uh, a Montclair resident. And uh, she has done extraordinary things in her, in her very young life. Autumn Turner was raised by a single mother who has still work ethic, passion, and compassion.
passion in her life. She is only 25 years old and has kept her mother's lessons near and dear to her throughout her life. She graduated from Lacadair Academy in 2009 and Rockland State University in 2014 with a major in general humanities and a minor in musical theater. Autumn has worked very hard her whole life in school and in work while pursuing her dream and passion of singing. Autumn has been also in figure skating since she was three years old and began competing at the age of five until the age of 15. She started volunteering at South Mountain Arena at the age of 13 to help out with the Learn to Skate program and then became a coach at age 16. She has been working at the arena ever since. While at the rink, she then moved to the private school, Carney Christian Academy in 2013. She was a preschool aide first uh, for first and second grade uh, students, then began teaching drama to high school students and English to fifth and sixth grade students. So she's very, very multi-talented. She recently decided that it was time to follow her consummate passion, which is singing. And again, after becoming part of an all girl group called The Bloom for about three years, one of auditioned very recently for The Voice on NBC. And I don't know if everybody got the chance to see it, but it was a magnificent performance. And she got every coach to yeah. turn the chair around. Yeah. I've never seen that kind of enthusiasm on that show before. Um, her, uh, finally, the water uh, turned to Alicia Keys, who is her coach now, and she's working on the program, and uh, so our hope and uh, dream and prayer that she's able to uh, be a winner. But whether, however it turns out, she has really inspired all of us as a winner for her family, for herself, and for all of Essex County, and certainly for Montclair. Uh, we are extremely proud of you. Um, I actually volunteered to be her singing coach, but uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, she decided to <laughs> this is like, come on.
Being able to love what you do and do what you love while making a difference is what I have always wanted to do. Special thanks to Joe DiVincenzo for believing in the program to help and to empower and shape the community and myself. This award will be my forever reminder to keep doing what I love and keep paying forward. Thank you again so much for this honor. He told me that we had a star in our arena who was an instructor, and she, he told me, he says, she's going to be on the voice. I said, what? Are you crazy? So what happened was, there was things that were going on in the arena that he couldn't even tell me. There was a taping that was done there, because everything had to be hush-hush. But she was my granddaughter's coach. My granddaughter's five years old, and I taught her how to skate. Now she's doing very well, Water, thanks to you. But we're all very, very proud of Water. Very good. Congratulations. To Daisy, I want to thank you. I was still trying to learn how to play football. But I'll tell you, you've got some future ahead of you. We're all very, very proud of you and your mother who works here. Thank you very much. For your Carmen. Carmen, I know her when she was... I can't think of old lady. But uh, Karma worked herself up right from the beginning all the way up and she has a love for kids and children and we're very lucky to have you to be our Vice Principal of Karma, so congratulations. Yeah. To Margie, of course, you know, that Pat Siebel said that's her niece. They don't have the same personality. <laughs> Whatever they want, they get. But uh, and Lula Sal's here, see Lula Sal. You know, I have two stints in my heart, and between Lula Sal and Margie, they saved my life, not once but twice. So I don't know who to thank. Well, you, you, I don't think you had anything to do with it. You brought me there, but then Marge took care of me. When I told Marge, I, listen, I'm running for county exec, could you keep me in a... She did that. She kept me by myself. Nobody knew I was there until I left at the world, though. <laughs> but Marge, you're very special, and Barnes is lucky to have not only you, but also Louie. It's a great team there. Congratulations. <laughs> well, no, please, the Debra, to all the presenters, thank you very much. This was a very, very special program. Yeah. You know, and in Essex County, the last 15 years, you know who runs county government. It's the woman. And I made sure that the 12 represented, because if I didn't, Teresa Ruiz would kill me. <laughs> but I have a great staff, and they do an outstanding job, and we're going to continue these events, we're going to continually recognize our community, because this is what it's about. Thank God for all the women and what you do each and every day, and making us all better men. Thank you very much. <laughs>